Hey, welcome back everybody. Got a little lesson that we're gonna go through today. Gonna to expand a little bit on the mystery of the Sphinx. Talked about that a couple videos ago, but I wanna provide another proof of my of uh, my theory and why I think it's correct. And there's a couple other things I wanna cover as well. So just to recap some stuff, um, we've got Ab, Ra, and Ham, which is the dot, the line, and the circle. The dot is pure spirit. The line is spirit moving away from itself in action. And then the circle represents the sphere of its effects or the material sphere. Another way you could say it is astral body, ether body, physical body. Okay, I've got that right here. Abra and Ham, astral body, ether body, and physical body. Your ether body is your soul. Your soul is gold. This is the alchemical gold we're producing during this life. Your soul is essentially like the heart of all three bodies. It's the glue that keeps the astral body and the physical body together. Okay, now, we talked about Orion in the Orion Nebula. If you haven't seen my previous videos, check those out first, or else this might not make a lot of sense. And it, it still might not, because this stuff, I mean, this is, honestly, I think this is one of the hardest sciences to grasp, but it's also one of the easiest to grasp. It, it's very strange. Because it's almost like what holds us back from understanding it is the simplicity of it all. I know that might sound weird, but I think that's true. Okay, so we talked about the Orion Nebula and the stars in Orion's belt and how right in here somewhere or, you know, wherever it is, that the nebula is a star factory and it's creating. And as it creates, it projects downward. Essentially what it's doing, it's breaking a piece off itself to give it to us so that we may live. It gives its life so you may live, okay? The sun also does that too. The sun's a recapitulation of that same principle for our solar system. The sun gives its life so that we may live. Its rays shine down and create the energies which grow the food so we can be nourished. So it literally does give its life so that we may live. Okay. Um, where are we at here? Uh, let's see. I'm gonna, let's see if I'm missing anything. Okay, so what they were doing, you know, if you've seen the three pyramids, you know that their formation mimics the stars in Orion's belt. These were initiation chambers. These were not tombs. These were chambers of initiation. Back then, they were still on the materialization arc, the arc of involution. Okay. We didn't begin to be able to turn the corner of the arc of involution to start going into evolution until Christ came down, okay? And planted that cross there, that flaming sword, which divides, right? It divides the involutionary period from the evolutionary period. And if we've seen anything, it's that when Lucifer's on its descent, he acts as a divider. When he's on his upward ascent, he acts as a unifier. <clears throat> okay, so these are initiation chambers. It's got the king's chamber and the queen's chamber, which protect now also the pyramid, according to Manly P. Hall, the word pyramid comes from pyre and, and, and relates to fire, but it also means head. It means head, fire in the head. Right, because that's what we're looking for. We're looking to raise that oil back up that it descends. And then we'll get into this more when we get into like more of the occult physiology and how it actually works. But it descends, yeah, it, it descends from your brain. Your pituitary and pineal gland create the fluids, the cerebrospinal fluids, the milk and the honey to go down the Jordan River, down and go into Egypt and then raise that back up 
through good living and honest dedication and a pure heart and we raise that up and then when it hits the optic thalamus it creates enlightenment okay so or I, what they're doing here right we got the kings and queens chamber that pertains to the pineal and the pituitary and this also pertains to different bodies in the sky the chambers were fixed on particular stars so they could capture this essence right and and i want to say sirius was the queen's for the queen's chamber and that actually represents another larger larger fractal which which alludes to our binary system with the Sirius star system. But that's for another time. Okay, so, and what they were doing with these, see, this is, this is heaven. And this is going down to the land of Egypt. Egypt represents the material sphere. So they were producing in the material sphere what was in heaven, on earth as it is in heaven. That's why the pyramids are to the proportions of the stars in Orion and what they were trying to do. They were literally pointing the pyramids upward and drawing down the energies of that constellation of that creator God, Orion, the father God of our solar system. Of course, there's other gradations higher than him. It's a chain, but this is, this is the God of our solar system the creative point of our solar system and we covered exactly how that happens in my previous videos how orion issues out the sun and then that throws off the old moon mars lucifer comes and splits splits the old moon splits the ham okay these all all these metaphors allude to something you can extrapolate them out to other correspondences and it's always going to work the same because this is the holy science this is the grand pattern within nature okay so all right so they're still on the materialization arc if you've seen my other videos then it goes involution down to the low point then that's when christ comes and then evolution it's the split basically between bc time period and ad time period you can you can uh Say it like that too. But so it's interesting, according to Rudolf Steiner, and this makes sense, the Egyptians were still on the materialization arc, but they were very clairvoyant. They knew what was to come. They knew that the Christ was to come. So they were preparing and ritualizing that point where the Christ would come. The Christ is nothing new as far as any of this goes. The Egyptians knew the Christ by the letters KRST in Egypt. So they knew this was to come. Okay, The reason they mummified, that, that's another interesting point that pertains to this. Now you'll see in some depictions, you'll see Osiris' body wrapped up in the mummy bandages, but his head and shoulders are free. Okay, what this symbolizes is the same thing that when, when I showed you in my other videos, the Grand Rosicrucian diagram, this is that upper aurora, that's his, his upper parts, his gold, and this is all the gradations of lower metals below that, okay? The body and the mind, that's the separation between the upper mind and the lower mind, or the mind and the body. You can describe it either way. It's all analogies of one another, so... According to Steiner, the reason that they mummified is because they knew they were still on the materialization involutionary arc, right? What they were afraid might happen is that if they didn't mummify and preserve their physical form, that when they died, their spiritual form would leave and forget that it was ever here. So they mummified so when their spirit left their body, they could gaze upon their preserved body and recognize that that was them too that was a material form of who they are and it would entice them to come and reincarnate so they could finish the great work okay also 
Let's get into the symbolism a little bit. The crook and the flail. Well, a flail is a whip, right? If these are shepherding tools, the flail is a whip. There's also some talk about the flail being used to hit the wheat and separate the wheat from the chaff, which is also just, it's another uh, fractal of, of what this means. But essentially the, the whip, that's going to get you going. That's going to send you in another direction. The flail is going to corral you. One represents the hand of gentle guidance, the other the whip of severity, mercy and severity, the two pillars, right? The pillars of mercy and severity in the Kabbalah. Okay, also we can symbolize this as the dot, the line, and the circle, once again, because this is the master key, okay? I didn't make this up. I've, I've got a lot of books on symbolism, particularly uh, where I really got a good grasp of this is in Manly P. Hall's Lectures on Ancient Philosophy. Let me, check, let me just check how much time I've got on the... Okay. Okay, so the dot, the line, and the circle. The dot is Osiris. The line is the crook, okay? The crook. And the outer circle is the whip. So we got, once again, mind, soul, and body, okay? These are all universals and they can plug into each other. Or astral body, ether body, physical body. Astral body, ether body, physical body, okay? So, Osiris, pure spirit, the, he moves away from himself, comes to the edge of matter, where outside of this is hell, okay? Outside the sphere of light is hell, okay? So that's where the whip comes in, the coldness of space, or what sends, what sends essences back. You know, this is conceptualized by the sun, and then how it formed the moon was its flames were hitting outer space, the coldness of space, which caused precipitation. Okay, it caused steam and then precipitation to come back down. Through that process, it ended up forming, gathering particle, particulate matter, and forming what we call old moon. Okay, but just realize we've got Osiris, the dot, the crook is the line, and the whip is the circle. Okay, now it's dual symbolism too, though, because when you're at, when you're in the dot, Osiris might whip you to send you out. Oh, well, you got to go. You got to go on your journey, just like Abraham had to go on his journey. God had a calling for him and said, nope, time to go. Time to leave your parents' abode. So it, it, it's always dual symbolism. It just depends on what perspective you're currently viewing it from. That'll make more sense. Okay, because there, if you're already in spirit, then you get whipped to go the other way. Spirit moving away from itself into matter. Then once you hit the, and matter is kind of pulling you with the, the guidance of the crook. Once you hit the edge of matter and don't want to go any further, then he switches hands and then whips you from the edge of matter to start your ascent back upward, back into spirit. Okay, so let's see if I missed anything on that. I think, I, I think that's all taken care of <clears throat> now. Yeah, so that's what they were trying to do. They were drawing down the energies, and they were very serious about this. They must have been because look at the megalithic structures that were built to commemorate this whole process. Um, okay, let's take a look here and see. Hopefully we can make this a somewhat short video here. I only just want to cover just a couple things here. I had some stuff in my mind, and I just wanted to get it out. Okay, so let's talk about the sepulcher for a second. You know, you got the stone tomb with the golden top on it, right? Well, this, again, go back to what we said here. Higher mind, lower mind. It, it symbolizes the same thing. We can put a divider here. Upper brain, lower brain, or left brain, right brain. When you're, when you're talking occult anatomy. These patterns pertain to everything. 
All natural things will have this pattern. Okay, so this is obviously the tomb that the initiate lays in for three days, and, the, and this represents death, okay? That represents death, but the cap of that thing is blue and gold, or sometimes in other traditions they say purple and gold. But what that actually represents, when you use the flame as a symbol, you can use different symbols. Lots of different symbols have the same meaning if you understand how to decode them. But that's the blue and gold of, of the flame. If you take a flame, that little, that little empty part on the bottom of a flame, that's where the dark heat is, or the invisible heat. Okay, you can't even see it. And then the blue flame comes up from that, and then the gold flame, or its outer expression. So once again, in the flame, we have the dot, the line, and the circle. Okay, yep, we've got the Jehovah ray and the Christ ray. That's, it also symbolizes that. And when we get into the spectrum and how things project into matter, we'll cover that more in depth. I just wanted to cover the symbolism of the sarcophagus right now. So the bottom part symbolizes death or the death of the right brain, because we have our God in profile who gave his right part to us so that we may live. And it's the chain of gods that goes down. And now I want to get into my uh, theory on the real mystery of the Sphinx, because we may have solved it. Okay? And I've, I've got another proof of that. I've, I talked before about how Graham Hancock believes that the head of the Sphinx used to be a lion and that it's supposed to align with Leo on the vernal equinox. He may be right about that. I'm not saying he's not right, but I think I found a better explanation. Initiation science is, if you go to the Crado Rapoa, which I've mentioned before, Manly P. Hall has a book on the Crado Rapoa and the Egyptian initiation ritual, right? And when you think of your sphere... Your sphere, let me draw it, okay, I'll draw it right there. You got your, your, uh, the wheel of the seasons. Hopefully you can see that and it's not too small. I got all kinds of stuff on here, but I'll, I'll just make the quick point. So you got your wheel of the seasons. Where we're at right now is Aquarius is rising on the vernal equinox. It's about to be the new age, or we, we, depending on some calculations, we're already in it. So... And on this side, you've got Leo. Leo's there right now, and Aquarius is there right now. In the, in the Egyptian initiation ritual, the Leo the lion raises the man up out of the tomb of winter, the tomb of death, okay? That's where we're at in the great year cycle right now. And the age of Aquarius is supposed to be the is supposed to hearken to the, that this is the age of Christ's return, which, again, you've got the line raising the man. It's in the Crata Rapoa, okay? So, now also, what this also does, what it also aligns, so not only do we have Aquarius here, we've got Aquarius here, right? This is the same thing. You just picture Picture the Sphinx looking that way toward the vernal equinox. We've got Aquarius, Leo, okay? Scorpio, the left brain down here, the lower left brain, because Leo is the higher part. It's the higher mind. It's the higher intellect. Scorpio is the fallen intellect, okay? And then Aquarius, the fallen right brain capability, and Taurus. The exalted right brain capability, or what Steiner calls the Michael imagination. And Michael slays Lucifer with the spear, right? Taurus represents that. Okay, and to give you a proof of that, see now what we've got is we've got the face of a man facing the constellation of the man. With the water pitcher. Then we've got Leo perfectly aligning with Leo on its backside, the backside part of the lion aligning perfectly with 
Leo on the autumn equinox. Okay, that's that's what we're shifting into, and the and it acts as a teeter totter as Leo descends. He, he raises man up back into heaven, back into heaven, the summer months of the great year cycle. Okay. <clears throat> That also puts the alignment of Taurus, or that right brain function, right up back on the exalted point, okay? And Scor Scorpio is in the depths of winter, okay? To show you a, a proof of... Now, I, I just surmised that. I was like, gosh, that's what makes sense to me for the riddle, the riddle of the Sphinx. Um, so, you guys be the judge, but... I think uh, I think it kind of proves itself. And for for just another proof, here we've got. This is a let's see. This is Jacob Bamey, I think. Let's see. Yes, Jacob Bamey. Oh man, he was a great mystic. And you see, as as it's pertaining, it, we've got Taurus in alignment with the top. Part, and Taurus is then exalted. The Michael imagination is then exalted because this is all about the cycles are what evolves us as humans. The, the constellations have a direct effect on us. Okay, This is how God creates. This is how things evolve. God, the mind of God creates and then it projects downward through all the layers of materiality till it gets to our layer and we are in physical solid form and completed the materialization arc. And like I said, that was at the time of Christ. You can plant a cross right there at the bottom declination. Okay. Let's see if there's anything else I wanted to go over here. But yeah, it's all about these, these cycles are what evolves us as human beings, okay? And the ancients knew this. This is, this is what the uh, initiates were trying to say, but could not tell people for the longest time. They'd be put to death for talking about this stuff because the church did not want this getting out. They did not want people knowing this, okay? Um... But yeah, it's all about the human coming into form and then and also because the mind is part of that, the mind coming into its form. And each time we come each time we complete a revolution, we gain something. We gain a new faculty of the mind, which this is our we're regaining our right brain function in balance with the left because we're off balance to the left because Cain slew Abel. Abel is Taurus, the right side of the brain, okay? <clears throat> so that's what's going on and if you can if you can grasp that concept that every age we go through is like a mini revolution so if something happens each age, we we gain a little bit of something and then but when a great cycle completes we gain a whole lot. It's larger cycles produce more, lesser cycles produce less, but they're all wheels within wheels. Kind of like Ezekiel's vision, right? Wheels within wheels. Um, I guess just to finish up here, I don't think I'm going to cover anything else right now. We'll make this one pretty short. Let me check the time. Okay, we're going on 25 minutes, so that's going to be good. For this one, I just want to suggest, if you guys have not listened to uh, Lupe Fiasco's album, actually a lot of his stuff's good. He incorporates alchemy in so much of his music, if you can grasp it. If you understand what he's saying, he's like creating the great work in, well, his album Tetsuo and Youth is just amazing. The song uh, Dots and Lines, Body of Work, is about piecing back Osiris. Okay, just listen, listen, you know, remember the 14 pieces that get chopped up and, the, and then they get, the 14 pieces get put back together. The song, They Resurrect Over New, he's describing the cosmic creation process, projecting downward, and 
Yeah, and then like like I said, dots and lines. Yeah, that's a really good one too. His stuff's so multi-layered. He, the dude's a genius. You should, if you guys are interested in alchemy and stuff like that, you should listen to his album Tetsuo and Youth is what it's called. That thing is a masterpiece, an alchemical masterpiece. It's really amazing. Well, okay, guys, that's gonna do it for now. I don't, I don't think I have much else to say. I just wanted to get those points out, kind of tie together some of the stuff that I mentioned in the uh, other videos. I'm still trying to upload my first video that I made. Some, for some reason, it was like 13 gigs, and it's like a two-hour lecture, but I don't know why it's taking so long. So I'm hoping to get that up today, and then just stay tuned. I'm sure I'll be making more of these as, as new concepts come to me. So again, thanks for watching, and everybody take care.